Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can transfer your Unreal Engine 5 scene mesh into iClone for precise animation and positioning via data link. Initially, you won't need to worry too much about proper position when animating, as you'll be able to transfer the animations from iClone to Unreal directly, or use real-time recording with timecode synchronization. Reillusion 3D software works seamlessly and intuitively with Unreal Engine 5. In this tutorial, we're going to use the iClone Live Link and Auto Setup plugins, so if you're not familiar with these, please refer to the introductory tutorials for Unreal Live Link in our Reillusion courses first, for installation and basic operation. Okay, let's start off with exporting our reference mesh from UE5 to iClone. Again, please ensure that you already have the Auto Setup and Live Link plugins installed. The Live Link plugin will appear in your iClone plugins menu, and if properly installed, both plugins will appear in the toolbar for your UE5 project. I want to export this entire landscape mesh to iClone, so in order to do so, I first need to right click on it in the outliner and go down to transfer to iClone. This will bring up three options, and for now we're going to choose the first option, which is transfer to iClone. You'll see the reference mesh immediately import into your iClone project under a folder called UE underscore scene. Since we're just importing it for animation reference, we don't need to bother with any materials, which would weigh down performance. That was pretty easy, so let's try a couple more separate meshes from our Unreal project. I can multi-select a few of these rock meshes, and then right-click on them, and again choose the same option. You'll see them appear right away as separate meshes in your iClone project, collected under a new subfolder called UE Actor. If I multi-select a few more meshes in Unreal, and perform the same steps, you'll see it will create another folder in iClone with a zero at the end of the folder name. That number on the folder name will increase in increments of one for every subsequent import, regardless of how many meshes you select at a time. Let's try to import the same meshes again, only this time I'm going to choose the merged option when right clicking. What that will do is merge all of those separate meshes in Unreal to a single mesh in iClone under the UE merged subfolder. We can repeat the process for the other meshes, and you'll see that they will also be merged into a single mesh under the same subfolder. The final import option we're going to take a look at is the simplified one. This will merge the selected mesh and create a proxy mesh in iClone with a reduced face count, again for the purpose of lightening the draw on resources. When we choose this option, we can see that it will also import into the UE merged subfolder, but it will have an SM prefix in the name instead of an IC merged one. This mesh will have a significantly reduced poly count in iClone, as again, we are using it for position reference and not for looks. Okay, now that we've got our reference meshes set up in iClone, it's time to import and position our character. If I click and drag him in from the content manager, you'll see that his initial position is obviously not ideal. What we can do to get him where we want him fast is to use the align to function, which you can find in the toolbar. First ensure your character is selected, then click on align to, then choose the target mesh you want the character to align its position to, either from the viewport or the scene manager, and choose all axes. Once we get him into a good initial position, we can activate the motion director from the toolbar at the top to have our character explore the environment a bit. You can notice that right away our character has foot contact set with any terrain or prop mesh, meaning that it can accurately traverse any environment using the motion director tool. If you activate Live Link, this means that you can now use motion director in iClone to quickly create accurate movement and actions for your character without the need to set up manual player control in Unreal. One important aspect of this pipeline is the ability to generate precise motion and interaction between the character and its environment. In this example, I'm transferring a few reference meshes into iClone using the method just shown. The character has been transferred in using LiveLink, which you can learn more about in the basic tutorials mentioned earlier. As I move the character in iClone, you'll notice that it maintains a consistent position in Unreal as well. Let's move on to learning how to tweak our character's pose and position. I'll first apply a quick sneak idle motion to our character from the content manager in iClone, 
and then proceed to open up the Edit Motion Layer tool to adjust it. All I'm doing here is positioning our character's hands so that they're grabbing the wooden planks in front of him. You'll notice when we play back though that they sort of float around, which is not what we want. Luckily, we can easily fix this using the Reach Target tool in iClone, which allows us to constrain parts of the character's body to other meshes in the scene. Let's deal with the right hand first. I'm going to first select that node in our Reach Target dummy, then click on Select Target and Keep Current Pose, then select the plank of wood we want him to grab. That hand is now constrained to that plank of wood, but we can still refine the position a bit. I'll quickly repeat the same process with the left hand, and now if we lock both hands and feet in the Edit Motion Layer tool, we can see the human IK at work. With a bit of animation tweaking, we can make it appear as though our character is struggling to pull the wooden pallet from the mouth of this stone arch. Finally, a little tip when working between the two programs with LiveLink. If you want to position your characters using the legacy method, you can bring in an iClone origin point from the toolbar menu in Unreal. You'll want to make sure that this origin point is located at 0, 0, 0 on all axes. However, since DataLink now has the ability to transfer the reference mesh to iClone, you don't necessarily need to use this. We'll have a bunch more UE5 pipeline tutorials coming up guys, so don't forget to check back on our YouTube channel for the latest updates, and I'll see you in the next video.